Thank you so much for coming on my show today, Alex. Oh, gosh, Rob. I think we should quit right here. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I don't know that I want to ruin your introduction. <laughs> no, oh, man. my God. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, wow. Uh, it's an honor to be on uh, Mr. Paula's Hogwarts School of Aliens, Wizardry, and Paranormal. So, <laughs> oh, goodness. You know, a lot of people yeah, ask me. Um, it's, it's been interesting. It, it's been interesting. It, it's been, it has been very, very challenging because there's nowhere to run. You know, there's just nowhere to go. And, and um, you know, you just, uh, you just have to stand in it. That's all you can do. Hey, some people have been asking, and I, I'm going to let you uh, share some information here. I just want you to just go and share your wonderful wisdom here. But a lot of people have been concerned and asking how the surgery went. And um, I'd like you to mention your website. Um, uh, you, you recently um, uh, tell people about what happened with your physical health, what you found out, and uh, the good news that just come about. Okay. Well, um, the procedure went great, and I'm feeling 100% better now. And I don't want to dwell on that. Um, I don't want that in my field anymore. So, um, you know, let's just let's focus on things that are very positive or more positive and current events, if that's okay with you. Fair um, enough. I, I, just, I, I just don't want to go back there, and I don't want to keep that in my that energy in my field. Very good. And um, as far as the website, um, Mr. James Harkin, by his own grace, um, created this website that has um, – I think most of, if not all of the video links and things like that. And it's www.alexcollier.org. And, um, he's a remarkable man. He's, a, he's just a, just a great, great young man. And I'm so honored that he, uh, took the time out to do this for me. Well, you deserve it. And I, if I had, uh, any computer skills, I would lend a hand there for you too. Uh, and Alex isn't going to say it, folks. As you said, we're going to move on from himself. Just let's just say, he had a health crisis, uh, uh, the surgery procedure went well, and he is back, and we're going to focus on good stuff. But I do want to, uh, I'm going to make the appeal. I know he won't because um, that's the kind of guy he is, but um, Alex is in a financial challenge situation, and ladies and gentlemen, he has some, uh, I think, do you still have books there available, or if you can purchase books? And he also no, has some donations. I, don't, I don't have, I never sold anything. Oh. The book, the book was free. It's online. Okay. Different places. Uh, the tapes, you know, people can burn. No, I didn't. This was not a business. It was not set up to be a business ever. Okay. Um, you know, the information was free to everyone and anyone who wanted to listen to it. And uh, that's kind of what it is. So well, there you go. that's what it still is. And I, we appreciate that. He does have a donation button for those of you who can uh, resonate with that. Uh, you may be in your own situation in the past. If you can help out, please do so. Alex, so tell us, um, everyone knows that you are in contact with the Andromedans. Can you uh, give us any perspective of uh, what's going on these days? There's lots of things happening uh, in the world. Um, I'd like you to just, from your perspective, with your wisdom and you, what you see going on, um, just share with us uh, anything you want about your last experiences or what your current situation is with them and what's going on and anything that people want to know. Okay. Well, gosh, two and A's are easier because I haven't done this in quite some time. So um, let's just say that current, let's start with current events, current events that are going on in the world. You know, I, I hear when I have internet access, um, I, I, I'm, I get emails and, and, uh, from folks who are like, wow, you know, the information is still relevant today as it was back in the nineties, early nineties. And, um, you know, I have to agree. I mean, things that they thought were going to happen, you know, earlier, um, are, are now coming to fruition now. And, um, it is really quite interesting to see uh, how the spiritual battle that is that is going on, that has been going on in, in higher dimensions, is now being pushed towards Earth 
an inch of third density. I mean, if you're, and you mentioned this about one of your guests that's going to be at the conference who um, talks about dreaming and, and traveling and out-of-body experiences, I'm assuming that that falls in line there, or, um, you know, those who do Toltec uh, traveling. Um, you know, many of them are experiencing a great deal of pressure, and many of them cannot get out of their physical bodies at night, or it's really, really hard, or the landscape of the dreams keeps changing, and that's because the dimension the dimensional war is, is pressing against their density. And it is my sincere hope that this doesn't actually um, break our periphery, our, our visual periphery of third density, um, because it's messy. It's really messy. And, and it's, if I can use an expression, it's pretty much balls to the wall at this point. Um, you know, and, 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 yeah, many people can experience it. Even even people who are not really awake, they know something's wrong. They they sense it. They can feel it. Uh, those people who are awake, you know, you're you're probably watching the news or you're reading the paper or you're you know listening to the different things that are going on and the different information that's coming out from all kinds of people from all corners of the world, which is which is absolutely wonderful. Um, and you're probably shaking your head thinking, you know, this is it. You know, you, you think this is it and uh, things are coming to a head. And uh, you would be right. Things are coming to a head. And, um, you know, the, the all the players are lining up. The table is being set as we speak, you know, for the show. You know, the show, whatever show that is that they're going to, the dark side's going to pull. You know, at the end, their last trump card, their last card. You know, they're they're all they're going to play it out. They have nothing left to do, um, because they don't give up, which is unfortunate. So, um, and many light workers um, are just having the crack kicked out of them all over the place, uh, and other people who have contact with regressive beings are being tortured, they're being uh, harmed. It's, it's just, it's awful. It's just awful. Um, you know, and, and now there's kinds of information that is sort of coming out where the CERN um, device in um, Switzerland, there's talk that it's going to be turned on and it's going to be used to um, meld timelines. It's supposed to help take two timelines and meld it into a third timeline that is the new world order. And I want to, I want to go after that if I can just for a minute and just remind you one of the reasons the AAEs came here in the first place is that in the far distant future, our future, tyranny shows up in our galaxy. And they traced it back to our particular solar system. And I can tell you that whatever happens with the New World Order, it's going to be short-lived. Um, it, it, it's destiny. It's, it's not built on a firm foundation. That foundation has already been eroded, um, not only by benevolent forces, but also by those who were actually propping it up. Um, you know, they have been waking up to what the real agenda is, and they have decided they have made new choices. And, Rob, Rob you made a comment about the government um, misbehaving. Um, as true as that is, they, they have been – they're put in a real awful position, and they made those choices themselves. You know, they, they did. They made those choices they were pretty much tricked into those decisions by being told they could keep their weapons. They didn't realize that their most powerful weapons at that time, which were nukes, um, could never be used against the regressive group that they were dealing with. Um, they just had no idea. They were, they were so outthought. The game was over before they even started it. And now they're in an absolutely horrible position and, um, 
probably with the exception of a few, I think if the tables were turned and they had to do it over again, they, there's no way they would do it. Um, because everybody's been put in a hurt locker at this point. And, uh, this is all good, you know, um, because sometimes we have to experience terrible things to realize this is not what I want. And then people begin to create what it is that they do want. They change their lives. They, uh, dream bigger dreams. They get more focused on what it is they want. They clarify their own special intent, their integrity and their intent. I, I can't stress intent enough about what it is that they want in their life. You know, and then once you really know that, you can start to create it and pull it towards you and pull it into your life and, and turn your life around and change things. And, um, never, ever, ever give that up. Okay. Um, you're not the property of anyone. You are the property of yourself. You are your own being. Never give up your sovereignty. Okay, as an individual or as a nation, you don't have to. It's all a lie. It's all a trick. Okay, and the point is, is to get you to surrender your free will, and you should never ever do that. And the benevolence would never ask you to do that. In fact, that would encourage you to be sovereign, to be independent, to be self-reliant. So, having said that, um, geez, Rob, why don't you help me out here? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, listen, um, I, I, I've been taking a couple notes here. It, it's wonderful to hear you sharing. You mentioned 3D spillover, and you meant, of course, the spiritual battle coming down onto the physical plane above Earth, a la Mahabharata type style, where we actually see some some uh, uh, battles in the sky kind of thing. I've been told uh, there are there is some of that going on, and where people are just asleep to it now. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Alex has extremely limited internet. Um, we're trying to get that rectified so he can get on and, uh, thing, but he's like in a, literally a library situation with limited time, barely able to answer emails. And, um, so if he hasn't gotten back to you or anything, uh, you know, I want to mention that, that he just, hasn't been able to literally get to an internet, but he's not familiar with the uh, Corey Good ET information out yet. The Blue Sphere Alliance, uh, some of the the new breaking news that we're hearing that's going on, but um, there's absolutely a lot of uh, information that you're saying here that is actually still quite relevant. You did mention CERN and timelines. I'd like to ask you a little bit about that and. Uh, for those of you folks who are listening to me and may not have heard of Alex Collier before, except in reference, again, go to his website, check out his videos, learn about his work. But when he says A's, he means the Andromedans. Um, I was with Fred Bell, and he was very excited one day, and he told me, hey, the Palladians have handed me off to the Andromedans. And I go, okay. <laughs> He's, and he says, I'm having contacts and he got, he showed me pictures of some stuff and some, sh they told him to take pictures and there was, you know, the phenomenon ships that, that contactees get. And he said, they are the highway patrol of the galaxy. And he really liked them. He said, they're a lot more active. And he says, get ready for big changes. They're not going to pussyfoot around. So Alex, uh, can you share a little bit? Uh, I mean, this timeline thing, when we talk about that, we, we hear the the Hopi prophecy of the world's uh, dividing and the wheat separating from the chaff and the mystical Bible and the references of the ancient time of a, a great time of choosing and shifting and sifting where where the vibration of the earth changes and uh, the manifestation of the spiritual consciousness becomes more accessible for those light warriors are awakened as we call them and actually becomes more of a problem for those negative regressive beings that have made bad decisions and i'm not going to apologize for the government guys that have made their decisions anyone that would threaten you it's more than a bad decision um and from Corey goody t's information we find out there's about 10 different secret space programs bases on mars human trafficking um, you know, a lot of corruption, uh, trading earth based resources, uh, uh, ET technology made by earth humans on Mars to off world beings. 
um, trading uh, natural resources of the earth, including humans. You never like to talk about it for food to reptilians. So many bad things have been going, continue to go on. And um, I can't make excuses for them. But we talk about these different groups and timelines and the melding. I don't think the New World Order, I don't think the A's are going to allow this type of thing. Do you think there's any possibility of this taking place? And so I, my question is, is do you have any, uh, do you think this timeline meld of CERN could possibly be pulled off with the New World Order, number one? And number two, can you explain to us about the timelines? It's always difficult for those of us who haven't been like you up into a, a spaceship, looked out over the earth and, uh, you know, been explained this and shown this type of stuff. So tell us, what is this timeline situation and, and the multiple timelines and how things are pushed back and things are supposed to happen before, but they're happening now? It might okay. be some sucker to the people who have been uh, waiting for a long time. And there's so many people that are new to this information. And for those of you people who just woke up in 2008 and are just already tired and wondering why it doesn't happen and angry at ETs, we have to take responsibility down here. But uh, there's been a lot of work done for thousands of years by various races and various benevolent uh, souls incarnated on the earth. And we're building on each other. And Something has to do with this multidimensional aspect. Can you clear that up for us? I'll try. Um, I, I, I don't know at all, not by any stretch. Um, but I, I was made aware of at least three prominent timelines. One, obviously, that we're in now. The first was, now there may be more, but they were not prominent. And what I mean by prominent is that um, they were these prominent timelines were timelines that could alter um, events in the galaxy. Okay? So the one we're in now, and we'll touch on that last, the first that was created was the Philadelphia Experiment. Okay? And the second that was prominent was created during one of the Montauk Project chair events. I don't know specifically which one, but there was one in particular where something went out, the chair went out, but when it came back, it brought something back with it, okay? And because they took it, they didn't put it back, they took it and kept it open. They kept the timeline open, okay? Now, the regressives use these timelines to hop in and out and to hide. Um, even some humans are doing this now. Uh, they use these timelines to hide. They hop back in and hop back out, sort of like what you see in the movies. Okay, very similar. And I think in a lot of ways Hollywood's trying to tell us something. Um, now, do I think CERN's actually going to achieve this event? No, I do not. I don't believe it's going to be allowed whatsoever. Uh, a great deal of effort by multiple races um, that have our best interest at heart, including their own best interest, have been eroding and suppressing and closing those timelines um, for years. Um, they've been working on it for years. And they've even had some success in shutting them completely off. Um, but I don't know at this particular moment where it actually stands with those, uh, those timelines. Do I think it's going to be, you know, successful? No, I don't. Uh, remember they came here to make sure that this didn't go any further because it has future consequences, not only for our planet, but for the galaxy as well. It changes the vibration of the galaxy and it doesn't benefit the whole you know um you know the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few so to quote spock um so um a timeline is literally a place where people exist unaware that they are actually someplace else um it's almost a shadow self it could also be where a holograph is created 
uh, using technology, and people who are kidnapped are put into this holograph thinking that it's real, like the Matrix, but it isn't real. But their consciousness, their intent, creates the physical place. Okay, we are creators first and foremost, all right? And they're using that to create, they're using us to create their density. So that's, you know, something to be um, aware of. You know, your your ability to create is profound. And they don't have the same ability that we do. Remember, we're operating on 2 to 4% of our DNA. Okay? The rest was turned off. So imagine what would happen if we were on 10%, 15%, 25% of our DNA was turned on. You know, um, it would be remarkable. But we'd have to be responsible. So to get back to the timelines, um, I know that they were shutting them down. I've, I've mentioned this in past work. Um, I do not know at the moment where that is at. Um, I think that, and, and what do I think is going to happen? I, I think, Rob, based on what I was told um, by Morinay and Phaseas when Phaseas was alive, that they fully expect that the group here was going to play out the second coming. They were going to play out this, this Book of Revelation scenario because they have vested a thousand years into creating this myth so that we would create it for them, that we would lead ourselves down this path um, to subjugation uh, and to slavery and to accept um, uh, surrendering our sovereignty. So that's what I think is going to happen. And then, you know, I understand there's other information that say that's not. I guess we'll see. You know, I don't want it to happen. I don't want to be right on this at all. Um, but you can see the things playing out, especially uh, with governments, uh, with the Vatican especially stepping forward now, you know, talking about, uh, you know, the elimination of five to six billion people. Um, it's just remarkable. Remarkable. Um, so, uh, I, I just, I, I, I just hope people are paying attention. Um, you know, because you're going to be making choices and the attention that you give all of this drama is really what they want because energy flows where attention goes. So, um, heads up on that. And back to you, Rob. <laughs> well, the, you know, you, that's a great perspective. I really appreciate that. The, this uh, second coming perspective, um, you know, uh, uh, is in, is interesting to me, and um, because I my information, I, I have a close affinity with the Venusians. I felt uh, Dr. Frank Strange's was uh, uh, a very sincere individual, and. I feel that um, you know his uh, messages and, and uh, experiences allegedly with uh, Christ uh, on board the spaceship materializing, and of course we have the books of the wisdom and teachings of the masters of the Far East. There does seem to be this level of uh, spiritual consciousness that allows someone to um, 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 I guess they, we call it ascension, ascended being who is basically has a uh, control of what we would call the third density. That doesn't necessarily make them a God. And I'm not trying to say that Jesus Christ is God. I believe God is in every single aspect of creation. and can't be separated from it. Actually, one of the Dead Sea Scrolls uh, speeches that Dr. Uh, Frank Strange has revealed to us is a talk where Christ says, it's been said that, you know, I am in the rocks and I am in the hills. And he says, no, that's not true. He says, I am the rocks. I am the hills. And he was speaking from the Christ consciousness perspective, which is the pure light of the soul. And as the soul takes on various bodies in the lower worlds, it seems as though um, we have filters over ourselves and our light becomes a little dimmer. I see the Christ or Yehoshua as a, uh, a very high being who came here with 
full amperage and full light, just living a perfect uh, um, for him for his own experience adherence to truth. Now, people want to put him as a rock star and worship him as a person. And I'm not really down with that kind of uh, understanding. And then a lot of people want to say, if you say, I believe in Jesus Christ, he's my savior, it's done, your learning experience is over. And I do believe that that is part of the programming. I believe that his life has been misunderstood. I believe that his stories have been manipulated and written hundreds of years after he's left by the Roman uh, church. And I'll put this out. I'm going to ask you a question here in a second. But Dr. Frank Strange has said that he would go on board Victor One, and one time he was there, and Valiant Thor was on his right-hand side. The beautiful uh, vice commander, Teal, was on his left-hand side, and Jesus was behind him. And Dr. Frank used to spend hours in what he called the history coins, which were Akashic record. I think they were like little crystal metal coins that he would stick in there, and he would watch. He liked to go back to Bible stuff because he was really into the Bible. He was kind of a, uh, a religious a guy in churches and seminary schools, and he kind of talked like a preacher. And he would start off his meetings, Alex, and he'd say, the commander told me not to preach, but I can't help it. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> but they would tell him not to preach. But he had a beautiful spiritual, he was telling spiritual principles, uh, kind of in a religious context, but it was really, he said, it's spiritual, not religious. And he was sitting with them in the history room and and supposedly, Yehoshua, or they, they just call him Master or whatever, was behind him and said, I want to show you something. And they pulled up the Last Supper. And he said there were 200 women in the Garden of Gethsemane, and there was only five disciples. So we have a lot of misunderstandings about uh, what really took place. It's been manipulated. Can, can you share with me, uh, did you have any conversations with the Andromedans in regard to the life of Jesus Christ and the Venusians uh, information and that I'm contacted with say that the being or the soul energy of that physical incarnation is known as Sananda and that it's definitely has a influence and a presence on the earth and um, I just kind of would like to hear your perspective on Jesus Christ, uh, Yehoshua, Sananda, if the A's told you anything. And I asked you specifically, and I remember you said, he's your brother. Because I was, you know, people want to put people on a pedestal. And I remember when we had a conversation, I think it was 2008 or 9 or something, you said, Rob, you know, he's your brother. And I really like that. But I, I always want to know this kind of, this energy about the, the Christ principle versus this soul who incarnated. Um, and I do think that the certain elements of the benevolent ETs do uh, put a, um, a great deal of respect into that lifetime and that mission. Can you share about that? Your perspective, what you know? Well, okay. Um, when I was young, one of the first things I asked about was, was there a God? And we said, yes, there is a presence. We don't fully understand it. We're not aware of anyone who fully understands it, even those in higher dimensions, because um, the essence is essentially self-exploration, and it never ends. Okay? So, having said that, uh, they refer to it as the isness. They don't call it God. They just refer to it as the isness. And it's, it's, it, the presence is there for all of us to have self-exploration of ourselves. And uh, part of that self-exploration is the creating of physicality, whether it's third density, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, it doesn't matter. Okay, there's a physicality in each of these realms, dimensions, planes. Um, they're different than what we have here, um, but nonetheless, there is a physicality there. In regards to Jesus, and this is their perspective, they said that the biblical Jesus was, in fact, a composite character, that the church used the writings and teachings of at least four or five 
different people who lived um, before the time of Jesus, uh, and even those and even those uh, writings after Jesus. And you are correct; the only uh, records that exist are somewhere around the fourth to fifth century, and um, there's nothing previous to that. I think there's a few pieces of um, the Nag Hammadi texts from the Essene caves uh, in Quran. And um, what's interesting is that the church won't really let anyone read those because um, it tells a different story. And, um, you know, in their perspective, there were several Yahshua's alive at that time. One of the most prominent was... Um, not necessarily a spiritual teacher, even though he was a rabbi. He was also a military leader. And, um, you know, of course, the church doesn't want anybody to know about that. Um, is Now, as far as the Christ energy or, or a Christ being, uh, it is it is actually someone who is self-realized and who carries carries the light. They know where they are at all times, and there are many of those beings, you know, even now on this planet, whether they're humans or not. Uh, there are many of those beings here, but you know, they're not looking for followers. What they're doing is they're mentoring quietly others to come into their own power, their own self-empowerment, to be leaders. Okay, and that's how you change, that's truly how you change humanity um, permanently, is that you self-empower the people um, to teach and teach others self-empowerment. And it takes a while. You know, it is not this big show, this big performance. You know, it is not, you know, Sunday afternoon on the television, you know, send me $100 and and I'll forgive your sins. It is none of that nonsense. Um, you know, it's also interesting, Rob, that no less than five popes of the Roman Catholic Church said um, in letters and documents that still exist to this day that they can't believe anybody believed the myth of Jesus Christ. So um, it's an interesting it's an interesting conversation to have. Uh, I think what really matters is whether he, he did or he didn't. You know, none of us were alive at that time to really know. Um, again, the A's perspective was that he was a character. So uh, I think what really matters is is your connection, what you think. Um about your spiritual well-being and your connection to the source of all that is. I think that's really what matters. Um, I would agree with that. I think, and I'm not, you know, I, I do have a, a, a good perspective. I, I take a lot of information in and I don't always discount it because someone goes against something that I think or someone else said that I respect. That I have any problem with it. I'm always open and willing to learn. I made that clear to Corey when I had a conversation with the good ET guy. And for me, I don't have an issue at all with uh, them cobbling together many different um, uh, lifetimes to create a persona and a, a mythical character that they could use to manipulate people and to go forward. You know, my sources tell me, and I'm kind of curious about this is where we get into the ETs with their different perspective and what they tell the different contactees. Now, I don't have a problem that his life was uh, misdirected. I was, uh, Dr. Frank told me another interesting thing about um, um, uh, Christ, and I heard another uh, information from someone else that um, Mary was one of the Vestal versions who was in a, a group that was kind of like the oracles of the Essenes and they were doing interdimensional communication with spirit and they kind of had these special uh, sensitive 
type spiritual girls who were kind of sequestered and kept in this thing. And she had an experience. And allegedly, according to one source I heard, she had a, a physical encounter with a six dimensional being, which to her was like God. And she was a young girl and uh, they had conjugal relations. And, um, uh, that Yehosha was actually a part extraterrestrial and a part human incarnation, which was a specific purpose to bring a, cer a certain message. So uh, another thing I was told uh, by Dr. Frank was it wasn't so much the Jewish authorities that wanted him dead. It was actually uh, Rome because he was a threat to them at the time. They, they felt he was gathering a lot of followers and stuff. And this may speak to that. I don't know if he was the, uh, militaristic type person. I don't really get that. I don't feel that is true from my sources. Although there may have been another Yeshua, I've also been told that, you know, there's the Isa who died in, in, uh, India, that that was a disciple from India or from, uh, Greece who was preaching the Christ message, but was not Christ. So and there's all these different stories and I, I don't know if we're ever going to know, but um, at some point, my faith is, is that the message for me that he bought, it, it, not from the Bible, but from my own inner experience of extrapolating various other texts and information is that we are all children or sons and daughters of a living creative principle, which is the isness. Now we can't give it a name or a form because it exists in all names and forms. It's imminent and transcendent. So if we try to nail it down, we can't. But it is through faith that this is a benevolent, positive, living intelligence guiding the universe. It's an isness that is a constant state of learning. If you can imagine a waterfall just appearing in midair, it's that type of creative just isness of something that's constantly changing and learning from itself through the body of its own creation, which is itself. So we are all part and parcel of this isness. We are all part and parcel of the absolute, of the infinite mind of God. And that if we understand that and relate to ourselves in our secular, in this particular incarnation, in this 3D, that we're brothers and sisters of a, of a living presence, if we treat each other with respect, and love in honoring that familial relationship to all life, then through our faith, if we hold that kingdom in our mind, and as you say, intent. And ladies and gentlemen, I think before the, the four agreements came out, it was pretty simultaneous. Alex Collier was the one who talked about it is really important the Andromeda said about intent, and that's a beautiful thing that if we hold the intent of love and and community and relationship uh, that we um, will grow and prosper and become more powerful and in, in more in tune with the universal principles of the isness. So I personally feel that this incarnation was like another incarnation was a planned incarnation by the sons of light. If we read The Secret Places of the Lion by George Hunt Williamson and the messages from the inner retreats of the Great White Brotherhood and some of the um, extraterrestrial bases that seem to be working for the light, there seems to be a plan whereby certain souls are bought into the earth information to uplift this planet and to bring it into a, a higher resonance of light. And I believe there is a plan, which I call the plan of redemption. It's a biblical word, but that the Christ uh, uh, personage was an important aspect of disseminating information. And he taught unconditional love and forgiveness and, of course, those other things. So I find it interesting that the A's don't, know about that incarnation and can't really nail it down to one person, whereas many other extraterrestrial groups, which I highly respect, uh, seem to indicate um, 
their own stories and information about it. Many contactees are having uh, revelations of this nature. Not that he needs to be worshipped as a rock star or anything along those lines, but that that message and that information that was shared was very important. Can you tell me, uh, I saw... Well, you you addressed several things in there that I would like to comment on. Thank you. And one, it, it it may not be that they don't know exactly they what they shared with me they did for a reason, okay? Uh, I'll just say that. Um, number two, um, you know, this is a this is a fascinating conversation and fascinating topic. Um, as far as you know, Mary Magdalene. Um, you know, yeah, I've heard about the things where the she was like an oracle of Delphi and 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 all of that. You know, like you said, so much of history has been burned, destroyed. We may not ever know um, without some outside uh, intervention. Um, I don't know that the records will exist here. But let me let me finish my thought here. Mar- Mother okay, Mary, but, not not Ma- Mary Magdalene. Mother Mary. Just Mother Mary, right? Okay. 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 So now you know there are all kinds of people throughout history who have had visions, uh, experiences of you know meeting Christ, meeting other saints, etc. And you know they believe that they had that experience. And, and I know from my own personal experience, having been attacked the way I have by people who have never had an experience, um, there's no way you can tell me I didn't have that moment uh, or that experience, you know, because I was there, I was present, I was uh, alive, I was conscious, I was physically with them, etc. And, you know, people throughout history who have, who many of them are now saints because the church killed them. Um, and turned around and made them a saint, um, had these experiences. Um, and then you have the Shroud of Turin, one of the most um, incredible archaeological mysteries that I can imagine um, on the planet, uh, where the blood on the Shroud is um, has no Y chromosome. You know, has no, no, her, her X chromosome has no father. Okay, there's only a female, um, chromosome on the blood of a male child. So it's, uh, on, on, on the male, the imprint of the male on the Shroud of Turin. Absolutely fascinating. And, um, I, I will share this with you that, um, you know, the last time it was tested, the church purposely gave them um, a bad piece of cloth, and the reason they did that is they were afraid that the cloth would prove that the man on the cloth wasn't dead. Okay? They didn't know. So you have to ask yourself, well, what kind of information do they have that they would think this, you know, because they preach something completely different. So, you know, there, it's it's just one of those things, and I, I'm, I'm I'm thinking that we're all going to find out all at the same time, and we're all going to have that aha moment, you know, where it fits together and we know exactly what happened. I do not know. Uh, and I have spent many, many years pondering it. And Alex, thank you for your words of wisdom as always. It's an honor to interview you here on my show for the first time. I hope you'll come back as often as you want. If you have a message or another contact with the A's and A's up there listening, um, it's time for Alex. Uh, he's, uh, maybe he can get something exciting before the conference and share with us some new information. I know he'd appreciate it. Our group would appreciate it. And, um, 